another episode of Something to Talk About. Intriguing conversation with some of the two of the kind of coolest women that I know on Guam. That's all ahead from King's Restaurant in Tamooning with Something to Talk About. Come on. Welcome to Something to Talk About. Thank you for joining us today. We are at King's Restaurant, where we always are, and I've got some great guests with me. Uh, Major Joe Bloss, she is here from uh, the Ar Air Force. No, sure. The Guam National Guard. The Guam National I have to put the Air Force in there somewhere. And then this is Norma Castillo. She's with ESGR, and I don't even know what else you're with. You're like with everything, right? Oh, my God. Don't even mention it. I know. She's got a long list of <laughs> billing, but uh, we've got the usual fruit and the chase of platter, which I think... We're going to try to be delicate in the way we hack into this, but all of us have been enjoying the food. Uh, Major Bloss has got a, she's got a salad. <laughs> she's got a salad because you're trying to, you're, uh, you're, I'm tra you're training. I'm training for a marathon. You're yeah. training for a marathon, yeah. so you got to do, but you can eat some of this stuff too, right? Absolutely, yeah. you know, everything in moderation. Yeah, that's that's the way I like it, and th there's lots to eat on this menu, but this is one of our favorite, uh, one of our favorites on the table. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, I interview you guys for like years, and right. people probably have never even seen you. When we're, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but when we do it on, on the radio, they don't know what you look like, obviously, but you're out there yeah. in the community, so it's not like no one knows who you are, but it's yeah. fun to have you here yeah. at, the, at the table, man. Well, you know what? Thanks for the surprise putting you on TV. Yeah, she didn't know. She, I just, she, she that thought was that she fault. was being interviewed for radio, <laughs> but the, we'll blame it on Joe. Yeah. But um, So you guys got a lot going on. We always, uh, look at this. Check out these fingernails. <laughs> you are so patriotic. Yes, I am. You do you since the get go? Yeah, really. Have you always been like this? Yeah, really. But Why you know, when that? I was in the military, you couldn't wear all this nice yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. So since retirement, I've just been enjoying my 3D nails. Oh, that's like so that. cool. Yeah. Jealousy of your fingernails. Because she works in a military facility. <laughs> She's, her fingernails are nice and trimmed. Is that, is, is that like a yeah, government yeah, standard? Yeah, that's standard. For women, do you have to have your, your nails at a certain. Uh, it has to be presentable, not loud. Um, I couldn't wear uh, mm, nail polish that, like that. Yeah. Or something close to your skin. Clear your or light, yeah. light skin, you know. If but, you wear like light nail polish or something like that. Right. Yeah. I never do this. And in fact, there's like chips on it. But I had an event, so I had to, you know, get the get the, the whole thing working. But, <laughs> but now we're here at the table. Feel free to, you know, feed as you will. But. But All right, you got. I always try to check check in with you folks because I know that there's always big stuff happening. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna. I know that this is gonna be time sensitive, but I want to start with Joe because she's got like the coolest gig coming up, and I'm so envious. I don't know how you pulled this off. I don't know how to pull it off that you got to go, but okay. go ahead tell everybody what you're doing. Okay, our um, 94th Civil Support Team. Um, they get they get requested uh, to go to different places around the world. Mm -hmm. They recently came back from doing the uh, papal visit in yeah. Pennsylvania, where they provided uh, five uh, soldiers to assist with uh, the security, you know, ensuring security uh, for the Pope's visit. And you know, there were millions oh, wow. of people there. Yeah. And so they did that. So, uh, of course. Um, one of the big things, big events are coming up, of course, is Super Bowl 50. It's the 50th anniversary of the Super Bowl. And uh, it's happening in San Francisco. Yep. And uh, the California National Guard has requested assistance. So there's four or five states going out, Guam being one of them. Wow. And what a deal. You know, they needed that. somebody. I know, <laughs> right? They needed somebody to take some photos and do some PAO coverage. And, you know, they twisted my arm. So I got to oh, go. I twisted your arm. So you get to go to the Super Bowl. And I mean, uh, well, it, uh, we're actually not going to, our team is actually not going to be able to even watch. We're not going to be in the stadium. Yeah. We're going to be in uh, San Francisco at where they, what they call Super Bowl City and the NFL Experience. So mm -hmm. we'll be covering that, but it's like a huge block party, just blocks that will be um, closed off. And it's like a, a big a party. A big party. Wow. And so, mm -hmm. you know, with that comes tons of people. And yeah. 
you know, we don't want to say something might happen. So well, just in case, it's always that you always need. To we have ready. like five or six <clears throat> civil support teams from several states going out to ensure the safety of everybody involved. Wow! wow. So how did Guam get the invitation to do that? How did you guys get the invitation? Well, they they did you rotate. Put a call out? Yes, they rotate. Um, every CST has to get so much training and so many hours in actual events. So, you know, I'm just I, I don't know how they actually got the call, but. Uh, they were involved in, in, hey, let's put the team together so they're going out with so several cool. other states. Wow. You're so lucky. That is I so know, right? Who can be that close? To I know. Bowl? You win. We'll be close. <laughs> but, you know, even the general, when, when he was being briefed, said, are you going to watch the Super Bowl? And they said, well, maybe on TV, TV. sir. Because yeah. we won't actually get to go in the stadium. Calif California yeah. got, handling got that, that gig. The, the but, uh, stadium, right. So stadium. we're all out there supporting them to yeah. ensure the safety of everybody. But just being yeah. in the midst, though. Right? You know, yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I think, you know, I'm not but you know what the thing is that you guys deserve these kinds yeah. of jobs where you have that. It's not necessarily any less important than anything yeah. that you do. Providing security is a big right. responsibility. Absolutely. But doing it in a place where the you know, the interaction is fun. Yeah. It's, you know, a great a celebration in America, yeah, you know, the yeah, Super Bowl. Yeah, it's a, I think you guys deserve to have these kind of gigs. We right. Our, our civil support team, actually, as we speak, they're going through an inspection right now. Uh -huh. So, you know, once that's over, they, you know, they've been pouring their heart into making sure they, they pass this inspection. And so that'll be like What do a, you have to, how do you, how do you pass the inspection? I mean, well, what's they, the inspection of? They, they inspect everything. Their the logistics, equipment. their equipment, oh. their... Being able to properly utilize it. Yeah, um, yeah. When the res when the call comes up, how do they respond? Mm -hmm. You know, so many different ways, and they have to ensure that they're ready because yeah. they're the only civil support team way out here in the middle of the ocean. Yeah. And so, you know, they get the call. We got the call to Saipan sometime last mm -hmm. year when there there was suspicious substance, when there there was something happening up at Guam Homeland Security. They got the call. So. These guys have to be ready to respond on a moment's I, notice. Yeah. Well, that's what you train for, right? Absolutely. That's what you train for. Yeah. Ah, it is. Wow. I, I know. know some of the people there. You, you do? I mean? Yeah. So it just makes me think. Wow. Should I just re-enlist? <laughs> I you? wish I could re-enlist. No. Could you? No, I can't. I'm retired. What? All right. So that's, it's over. No double retarded. dipping. I'm about as retarded as, <laughs> as I can get about right now from the military. But I yeah, still, but you're you still got your fingers yeah, in everything in it. You can't stop. No, man. When it it's comes in, to troops, it's in her heart. She just. Yeah. She I know loves to you are. The you're, you. I think my problem is I got I got I got the military in my in my blood. Mm -hmm. And um, as a matter of fact, I was briefing um, briefing about ESGR to a couple of troops um, the other day. Um, Agnes Diaz's unit, the signal detachment unit, um, they wanted a USERA ESGR brief, and so you know they brought. They brought our folks in, but the gentleman that was supposed to do the intro, mm -hmm. you know, was running a little behind, and they needed to stay on schedule. So, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> you know what I mean? So I did the intro and went through the whole intro in like about 15, 20 minutes, right? And after the after the briefing, Agnes is the uh, first sergeant, first sergeant Diaz. Agnes, the good friend of mine, and she says, you know, I just have to let you all know. I am just so surprised Norma went through this whole brief and she didn't say one bad word. <laughs> <laughs> and I looked at her and I said, oh my God. That's so true. But I know. That, but these are new troops. They don't oh, even yeah. know me from Shinola. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. I was like, girl, really? We're supposed to be friends. <laughs> I don't need enemies. Yeah, thanks like a lot. Me. Thanks a lot. Yeah. But you do a lot of these things. I mean, the ESGR yeah. has always been your baby. You guys have, have worked uh, yeah. to, uh, to honor and... Uh, give some credit to employers who yeah. have supported the guard and reserve yeah. that's the yeah. bit that's what ESGR stands yeah. for yeah but in the meantime you're also doing other stuff like you do like a women's uh, veterans of yeah. is it a job fair or conference no, every it's, year um, it's an annual conference that the, the women vets um, hold and um, this year they're going to I believe their ninth Mm. Uh, women's veterans conference. is there a, is there an organized veterans uh, women's veterans group on Guam the, from what I know, I remember there used to be something, but then yes. it just sort it of died of, off, right? Yeah, now, now they're um, now they're um, they're just part of the regular. Uh, I don't think they're I don't think they're active no more, right? Mm. That, that no, the previous ones. Yeah. But we have another women's veterans organization called Women's uh, the Women Veterans of America, Chapter Forty Three, and the commander for that is um, Nancy Cooper. Mm -hmm. um, and that organization, uh, Joe is actually a lifetime member of that organization. So am I. Um, but uh, the thing about that organization is they're very new, but they're they're wanting to to um, 
be able to let the community know that we have a women's veterans organization now that's willing to participate in some mm -hmm. of the activities that go on on an annual, on an annual basis. So we've identified um, the Veterans Day as something that we would participate in, which we did um, at Adelou uh, right. in November. Mm -hmm. And then the next one is this one, the Women's Veterans Conference coming up in March. Mm -hmm. And then the Army Ball is something that uh, we want to tackle this year and hopefully get back on track so that the other Army organizations um, can feel like there's support there for the Army's birthday every year. Because every year in the past, they used to like um, rotate it between the Army Retirees Association would take the lead, then Army Reserve would take the lead, and then the National Army National Guard and whatnot. But um, last year, um, I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. um, the National Guard took, uh, took the opportunity to at least do a uh, Army birthday cutting ceremony right. cake cutting. for the cake cutting mm -hmm. ceremony for the um, for the army birthday because there was nobody that was able to take the lead on that. Yeah. So hearing and hearing that our organization, the women's organization had a meeting and we said, man, we can't have that happen again this year. You know, and so we're gonna take the lead on that this year. And what is the difference? I mean what what is the difference when you separate the men and the women in the in these veterans groups? What, what's different about being in an, in an all-women's veterans organization? Um, I, you know, I've, what do you guys talk both. about? What do you guys deal well, there's, with? There's there's women talk about? What do women yeah, there's, there's different issues that, yeah. that female uh, service members go through than, than a male yeah. service yeah, like member what? Would go like through. Yeah, like what? Like what are some of the, what are you, like what? Well, we have women's issues. We have different issues. Yeah. Um, some personal. That some personal issues that we would go through that, that that a male service member would never go through. Um, Is it having to do with like being a mother or some that being kind a of mother, thing? Some um, being a mother. Some know, being a single a single service member, having um, having a uh, a relationship and then not having that relationship work out. Okay, so that's like that, okay. I want to tackle right. that. Can we well, do that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because well, you both, you're both in the military, you both ha have the experience, so we'll talk a little bit about the difference. We're going to take a quick break here, okay, so we can chow a little bit, eat okay. your salad. All right. <laughs> we'll good. be right back for something to talk about. Welcome back. Here with uh, some of the ladies from the Guam. Uh, National Guard Major Joe Bloss is here with us, and Norma Castillon. She's with the ESGR. Is it the office? The the just ESGR office is ESGR that? Office. Well, let's just say one of those things. Mm -hmm. um, before the break, I was asking you about the differences between veterans organizations, where Men and women. yeah, the organization is geared just for the needs and uh, the the issues that face women mm -hmm. in the military. Can you even any more say these things about the differences? Uh, you know, they've just now accepted women in, you know, combat. Yeah. Right. There, you know, a lot of women are making some incredible headway. Uh, I talked to, uh, of course, you know, Admiral um, Bolivar. Bolivar, excuse me, Admiral Bolivar. Uh, you know, being in the top space in the Joint Region Marianas, that's that is a, that was a big for deal sure. for Guam yeah, yeah. for sure, mm -hmm. right? But yeah. there are a lot of other, uh, of course. I, I mean, I can't name everybody, but yeah. you know, Esther Hagigi. Yes. Uh, you've just there has just been another woman um, uh, that general. was pinned the general that was pinned the other day, right? Yeah. She is actually the sister <laughs> of our Air Guard commander, Colonel Adi Artero. That's oh. her, uh, her, oh, that's his Adi's sister, sister, and she's the first uh, Chamorro general. Wow. It's pretty oh. awesome. That is pretty that's awesome. Close to home. Yeah. That is really Adi's close to home. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But the, so you know, so women are in these positions. Uh, it, it, it's difficult to say that you know women are being, you know, held down or that they're not being advanced, or so that's not the issue. It's right. not yeah. that the issue. The issue isn't that women can't advance in the service. No, I think that's really starting to take a big change. You know, um, now I start, I'm starting, like you said, to see a lot of our women um, uh, sit in these in these higher positions. Um, for me, anyway, you know, in all the years that I've been in the military, I've just my experience is that women. Um, Women just have a different way of, of handling, um, you know, their logistics, their mm. their requirements. Um, you know, if I I can't say the, the the male soldiers don't do it either, but I just have a uh, a better uh, relationship with some of the female service members that I work with. I mean, I could call them and I can get them to basically run down to my office and give me what I need, mm -hmm. um, pretty much in an instant. Um, Is I'm it a different thing? It, but but 
But in the command, though, in the chain of command, a male in an office situation will will be required to just carry out the duty if you were a, if you were a senior. Yeah, in your I, case, probably you. Yeah. In your case, because you're an officer, you have a, you you have, I'm sure, a multi gender in your staff. So right. it's a matter of you, whatever command or directive you have, they have to they carry have to it carry out. It out. It's, the, it's the military. Yeah, yeah it's the military. Yeah. So it doesn't almost, it doesn't matter. That right. part of it doesn't matter, right? right? I guess what really, what really <coughs> um, folks are more concerned about with uh, being a male and a female in the, in the military is if a male is in charge of you, you know, like when you have to go take care of some female issues with medical or whatnot, right? Or like, you know, us, I mean, realistically, we have monthly issues know, issues mm -hmm. and so there are some still males you know out there that that don't understand some of the some of the um the emotions that we go through but is it but team. should that ever matter though is another question because i well, you know i'm also in a sort of i wouldn't say a male dominated business yeah. a male dominated office yeah. but my issues if i have any other female issues mm -hmm. should never ever play a part in my ability to it do my job Correct. it shouldn't but yeah. You know, you you still have some females that take advantage of the situation. I see, yeah, that well, that have, I see too. Yeah, you know but, that we have this right. monthly, um, this monthly uh, emotional thing that we go through. Maybe for like for some women, a couple of days. For some women, it goes for months. Well, right? Some women never really get out. <laughs> right. But yeah, yeah, some women it never ends. <laughs> but, yeah. You know, but, the thing about it is, is I I think, in my opinion, anyway, you know, I think that is the challenge. One of one of the challenges that some of these these male supervisors and and males that, that are in charge of women go through um uh you know I, yeah. that's what i've seen yeah but um, but that but that's not ever part of the conversation is it is that ever part of the oh i'm sure it was when yeah, when they back were back in the day yeah back in the yeah. day well before because it was just recently that they said okay we're opening everything up to, to yeah. females but yeah. i mean the marine corps fought it all the way to the last day when when Secretary of Defense Ash Carter said no you're doing it you know they were mm -hmm. still fighting it yeah. because you know with with if you go out in the field for example there might not be accommodations for women or mm -hmm. now we have to oh now we have to make accommodations for women because they have issues mm -hmm. yeah. you know or women are not are thought of as okay we're the weaker as far as physically weaker mm -hmm. sex okay are, are they gonna hold us back because now they can't hold their hundred pound rucksack or or whatever they need to do, they're, they're still, I think, think there's still going to be some pushback. Do you think that women, and especially, I mean, I've seen the women in the guard, I know that they, I mean, you brought a, a host, uh, a, a variety of women in different capacities that right. work in, in at the guard that will never let anybody say to them, you can't do you it. Can't you can't do it. Do it. Right, yeah. exactly. Well, I think nationwide, I think the women that, that would go into these types of positions, uh, battle positions or whatnot, I think that they will be the ones, you know, they will know themselves that they can handle it. You know, any service member I know will not take on a position that they don't think they could handle. Yeah, you physically know, so or mentally you know, or right. emotionally. So if they say, I want to be infantry, you can trust that woman wants to be infantry. <laughs> you know what I mean? She knows what she's talking yeah. about if she wants to be in, yeah, be so. in infantry. And, and I believe if they do get <coughs> into that situation, they're going to work that much harder, harder because they're already, okay. They they're feel not, like they have yeah. to overcompensate. Roger, yes. they're, they're not the going to say, oh, they're not going to be able to do it. Okay. So you're going to work a little harder to prove that you can. Yeah. 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 What about in the workplace situation? And this is like, I know this is maybe an exhausting topic, but in, um, in, a, in a workplace situation where... Uh, somebody had told me recently, they said, of, of being in the military, um, they said it, in their workplace, you can barely compliment a woman without it being... A big deal. Uh, without it being... Uh, an, without it without there being... Sexist a sexist comment. A sexist comment or that it's an, uh, that's an, an unwanted overture. You know what I mean? I that it's, it's, it's translated yeah. differently. And so is, is there a sensitivity among the women rank? That feel like even it a, a gesture. Yeah, it depends, yeah. On, the it depends on the person. The person, the woman. Yeah. You know. Um, because, but, but the, I, I mean to say that some, sometimes the policy is in, is so strictly enforced that yeah. nobody wants to ever step outside the realm. Right. So they don't, you know, you, you they they don't even say hello because they're in, you know, for fear. So it 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 kind of has right. its toll on the workplace yeah. where people aren't really necessarily talking yeah. to each other between the genders. I wish that would change. You know, <coughs> yeah. That's one of the things that I would I would really like to see change because, you know, um, back in the days, uh, and that's probably why I, I am the way I am, and people say, 
gosh, when you're not when you're not on you know in professional um, settings, mm -hmm. you know you you're lax, you're yeah. pretty lax. You pretty yeah. much put it out there. And you know, I tell people all the time, my my whole life since high school. I mean, I joined the military when I was 17, so you can imagine. And and I dealt. So with you've been around a whole a lot, lot of men. men, yeah. And and back in my days, I mean, in the 80s, you know, I mean, you really had to show. You, you carry your backpack, your duffel bag, and you know your duffel bag drag two duffel bags, and your back, your backpack, your weapon, your. your so that's where you learned how you know to cuss. I mean? Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Because you know what yeah. it is. Caddy, you know, when a guy comes by and he's, and you know, one of the females will say, can you carry my duffel bag for me? And then here I am, I'm carrying my, my duffel bag, you know what I mean? And then somebody says, what, do you need help too? You know, and I look at him like, no, I can carry my own, you know what yeah. I mean? I mean, it, it's like sometimes it depends on who you are. You yeah. have to fight for just your own pride and, and just, you know, for who you are. And yeah. So, so, yeah, I learned how to. You learned how to defend myself <coughs> back in the days, and it kind of carried on. I yeah. did, I did 26 years of this. Wow, you know what I mean. So, so yeah, yeah. But since being a civilian person <laughs> now, being retired for as long as I have, I've been able to handle myself around civilian professionals and stuff. <laughs> civilian professionals. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, Unless so. they push a button. Oh yeah. yeah. Then I don't even ever want to be in a room when that button is pushed. <laughs> I, I'm, I gotta tell you, but. But is it is this a career that you this is a move that you're staying in? There's no as no long until stuff. they until they get rid of me. I yeah, yeah, yeah. Try to this stay is in how long have you been in? So. I've been in 15 years. Yeah, oh, she's a careerist. Oh uh, yeah, you have to be if you're in 15 yeah. years. Yeah. But this and she does it for the love to her son. You know what I mean? Oh sure. Yeah, but yeah. he kind of gives her that edge. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> we uh, we talked a little bit about that. We have had that conversation about women who have gone. Um, to uh, these hot spots around the world, and they've done a they've done a tour out there. Everybody's been deployed, women included, right. and some of the challenges that women have had being deployed. Number one, leaving their families, right. and then coming back to a household where, you know, they, it has been run by somebody else for all of that time. Right. Is it is it hard to slip back into the role you had before you left? I don't think so. I mean, for myself, uh, my biggest worry when, when I leave is that is my son going to be upset when I get back? Mm. Yeah. You know, um, I, I mentioned you, my son's autistic, so he has his, his routines, but when mommy's not there, oh my gosh, oh my the God. first time I left for a week, I came back, he did not want it, me to even touch him. Oh. And it broke my heart. It took me like 45 minutes before he liked me again. <laughs> well, that's good. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. But during the time that you were gone, uh, do they make any special allowances for mothers uh, when when you're on deployment? Is there any special allowances? I, I want to say allowances. While, while we're out there? Or yeah. While yeah. We're, is there any really. other special considerations because you're because you're a mother no, than you are a When father? you're out there, you're, you're out there. You're doing a mission. I actually like to, I, I'm actually glad to hear that. I'm actually yeah. glad to hear that, that yeah. you aren't separated and giving any more favorable treatment because yeah. then that just sort of harbors right. Right, yeah. resentment. Yeah. From the male. Uh, from you're, the when male. you're out there, you're, you're out there for a purpose and, and you're expected to do your job. Yeah. And yeah. That's, that's, that's yeah. it. You just well, gotta do it. Good luck in the Super Bowl. <laughs> Who's your we team, by the way? Yeah, we really don't. Who's like your you team? For that. Yeah, I know. I really don't like you for that. <laughs> well, who's your team? Uh, man, I like both teams, but yeah. uh, I'm going to lean towards the Broncos. Okay. Well, I lived in Colorado, so I have to go Broncos. Yeah, whatever. I'm in <laughs> enemy territory here. My you boy know, is Cam Newton. The general, so the general is a Broncos fan, <laughs> yeah. and his aide de camp is a Panthers fan. So okay. That, you know, unfortunately, I won't be able to see it here. Uh, yeah. What they're what's you aren't going to be able to watch that. That's right. always more fun to watch two opposing. Uh, player, I mean, uh, of people sitting together in a, in a football game like right. Super Bowl. You know, by the way, it's Super Bowl 50. You know why they don't put the L in there? Like they do in other, they put the Roman numeral? Yeah. Because it's ugly. A Super Bowl L right, was right, ugly. It would true. be. It was ugly, so they decided to just make it, the, make it make it the regular there number. <laughs> See, I taught you something right. today. Right. Yeah. There you go. Good day. Hey, right. thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, well, uh, we'll see you next time. Actually, we'll see you on the radio. Thank you to you guys. Oh, as thank well. you for having us. With something to talk about, King's Restaurant. Get the chase the platter. <laughs> <Thank> <laughs> Eat your salad. Alrighty, I will. <laughs> We're supposed to show off that you're eating your salad. Yeah.